All right, so. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My class is not busy right now because we got off to a late start. Uh, looking for their social studies notebook and your packet. Okay, so everyone, this is a common theme. You need to know your packet is almost every day and your social studies notebook. All right, so we will reconvene in about 30 seconds when everyone's ready. 30 seconds. For those people who are done, you can check out the agenda. Um, so maybe I won't have to um, discuss some things in detail because you're there. And as always, please close your Chromebooks. I see no Chromebooks open in here. Thank you. You won't, you won't need your Chromebooks, oh my gosh, until about 3.05. So about a half an hour. Okay? So my class, how many of you cannot find your packet because I'm willing to wait for you? And you're... All right. Make sure you have a pencil, by the way, or pen. Okay? All right. So you had a chance to see the agenda. I um, wanted to make a special announcement that you know how the other day was National Banana, Nut, Banana Bread Day? Did anyone have banana bread on Tuesday? You did? Why did you bring me any? I'm just kidding. Did anyone ever put um, like nuts in their banana bread? Yeah? Well, today, guess what? We're on the theme of food. It is actually National Chili Day. All right. That does sound good, doesn't it, right now? Um, it's also National, what was it? Um, oh, National Chocolate Covered Peanut Day. But I'll be honest with you, we're closer to, we're about uh, two and a half hours away from dinner anyway, so hopefully you have some chili today on National Chili Day, February 25th, 2021. All right, um, we are done with um, the sign of the beaver. Okay, that took place before the Revolutionary War. The next read aloud book starting on Monday is called Woods Runner. You may be familiar with Gary Paulson, the author. He's written things like Hatchet, Anyone read? Anyone read Hatchet? Um, what are some other ones? Um, it's a whole. There's a, a series of Hatchet books. Well, he wrote um, a Woods Runner, and I guess the best way to introduce this to you, I'm going to show you a video that someone put together um, as an introduction or a preview to the book. Okay, so here we go. And come on, please work for me today. There we go. I cannot go full screen on this one, everyone, so um, I guess try your hardest to read the, uh, the words that come at you. Thank you. You see the words okay? Sort of. So he indirectly uh, becomes involved in uh, parts of the Revolutionary War, I guess without even trying. Um, the war actually comes to him. So 
that's what we're going to start on Monday. Now, here's the thing. Our, this would be the second book where the main character is a teenage boy. Okay? Just like in Son of the Beaver. So my goal for the last quarter is to find a book that's historical fiction where the main character is a teenage girl. Okay? Early teens, late teens. As long as I can find it. I did find um, plenty last year, but around the time that we were going to start it is when everything shut down. So we never got a chance to um, uh, never got a chance to use that book. So um, I'm actually going to probably ask some of you in this class to do a little bit of research for me to see which books um, are out there and which books you would like to use as a historical read aloud at the beginning of every social studies class for um, uh, the fourth quarter. All right, moving forward. These are the results from the geography check-in. Okay, at 94 responses, I'm pretty much just ready to move forward. So, uh, number one, and I'm going to go through this quickly because here comes the learning part. You may have gotten things wrong, but now is the, okay, um, what have I learned and how can I move forward? What line of latitude separates the northern and southern hemisphere? The equator. Okay, the equator pretty much like as the belt, <laughs> the belt of the earth, okay? Identify the best cardinal direction for Wisconsin to Europe. You'd be going east. I guess you could go west, west, but it would take you quite a distance to get to Europe if you wrapped yourself around the, around the world. Uh, which continent has coastlines on the Arctic, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans? Your continent, the one you're currently living on. An area of land that sticks out into a lake or ocean, a peninsula. Can someone give me an example of a peninsula? Just give me the specific name. Um, Alexander Hamilton, what do you got? Florida. Okay. Uh, Henry Ford. Say it again. Door County. Perfect. Uh, keeping it real. What about uh, Neil Armstrong? Say it again. Well, the Iberian Peninsula. Yes, where Spain is located. Uh, Oliver. I mean, sorry. Steve Jobs. India. India is correct. Okay. Italy is a good example too. Yes, Neil Armstrong. Korea, the Korean, the Korean Peninsula. Correct. That was on a, a test we had in the first quarter. Um, a narrow piece of land connecting two larger land areas. That's an isthmus. Okay. So imagine you're in South America. Imagine you're in California. Mexico would kind of parts of Mexico, parts of Central America, would serve as your isthmus. Number six, identify this image of land near the ocean. I showed you a coastline. Okay, anytime land touches an ocean, it's a coastline. coastline. This one uh, was surprisingly low, and that's why I'm glad it's on the quiz. Mexico is located in which continent? It's North America. Okay. Number eight, which of these states borders Canada? Um, can you tell my goal is for us to understand that we are not the only country on this continent? Okay, we have bordering countries. Not as much as other countries in the world, but we have two bordering countries. Okay, Mexico and Canada. All right, going on to number nine, the line of longitude at zero degrees is the prime meridian. That's this one. Okay, it goes north pole to south pole. Ho, ho, ho. Number eight, number 10, which state is farthest east? And that is Maine. Compared to the first time you took this test in the first quarter, um, every single question saw an increase in understanding. So that's the positive. All right. Okay, moving forward, I wanted to show you a couple of maps. Uh, I find this one really interesting. Okay. So this is what um, the economy of this continent looked like before the explorers got here. These are all Native American or Indian um, tribes or units, okay, or um, nations. So the yellow indicates the, um, the Native Americans who once um, hunted to survive. Look at this huge area here. Uh, purple indicates agriculture or farming. And then, of course, the other one would be, um, well, we got mixed hunting and gathering, but over here, uh, we have over here, um, basically you're doing fishing because you're on the, the coastline. Which one of these two cultures do you think had a, had a 
more had a higher population. The agricultural um, the agricultural groups or the hunters? Can someone tell me? What are you thinking? Yeah, you're, so you're thinking the hunters had more, so more population. For example, the Cree had more population than the Cherokee. Yeah, anyone else want to take a educated guess at this? Um, Abe Lincoln. No, not Abe Lincoln. Yes. No. I'm going to get it here. John Kennedy. Which one? You say the hunting had a greater population. Okay. Here's the thing. The agriculture and the farming allowed for population to grow. Because if you could grow crops, you did not have to travel all the time to get food for survival. Your population would grow. If you're constantly traveling in this area, trying to find out where the buffalo are located, okay, or moose or whatever, you're constantly moving. So you don't have a chance to establish these little villages or these little um, communities like the, um, the, the uh, Native Americans in the purple over here. Okay, so uh, another one I wanted to show you is this one. This one's a crazy one, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. But um, if the country was never explored by Europeans, this might represent the language of the language um, of this country. These are all Native American languages that once existed um, in these regions, in these areas of the country. Okay, and over here, I am not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce these. Okay, maybe that'll be homework for uh, for me. This is what the country. This is what the country would look like had Europeans never um, set foot. This is just obviously, you know, this is all hypothetical, but these are all Native American groups that, who knows. Um, if Europeans had not come in and colonized, settled, dominated cultures, this is what it might be. Wisconsin is, we are right about here, okay? This would be Ojibwa in here. All right, so I found that kind of interesting. You can tell I'm kind of a, a map nerd. Uh, this one, this one is relevant to some lessons we had lately. This is, these are the routes of the explorers from Spain, France, and Britain. Just by looking at it, what's the most common color you see? Anyone? Uh, Steve Jobs? Yellow. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll count the, the paths with the arrows. Red. Red, okay. Were you going to say that? Excuse me, Anthony. Okay. Red would be from Spain. I want to point something out on this one. Okay. Um, the French. Aren't many green lines here. Not as many as the British or the Spanish, but check this out. The French um, were the ones who found that if you go from here to the St. Lawrence River, which is connected to the Great Lakes, you could take all these water routes without having to travel through forest or mountains and get to Wisconsin, okay, where they were trapping beaver. And then from there, guess what? Take the Mississippi River all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, okay? and you would establish um, some trading posts along the way. Wisconsin, the, the very first European to, um, to, stand, to land in Wisconsin was Jean Nicolet in the Green Bay area, and he was uh, representing um, the French. And the last one, okay, and I'll discuss this one more next week. This is just um, where these place names came from. So for example, these states over here are named after Spanish. They're identified by the Spanish language. Okay, over here, uh, English. All right, so it's their influence on the culture and the geography. All right, real quick, some warm-ups here. If some students cannot see this in their classroom, I'm just going to ask you to get a little bit closer um, or squint. I'll read this one to you. My class, we're only going to do seven of these. Um, Classes out there, feel free to um, give the answers to your teachers or yell them out. The river flowing north to south from Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico. Anyone in my class want to give it a try? It's this red right here. 
Sorry, I tried to enlarge it, but it just didn't work. Uh, Neil Armstrong? Well, let's see if it's in Mississippi. Correct. What about this one? Okay, if you were to go from New York Harbor to upstate New York, a lot of British explorers travel this one. Anyone want to take a guess? Starts with an H? Yes. Hudson River, let's see. And by the way, students in other classrooms, I'm sure you're getting these correct by telling your teachers or um, saying them out loud. What's that, what's that mountain range? What do you got there, um, Abe Lincoln? Yes, just checking to see if you're awake. Abe Lincoln, what's this uh, mountain range? Appalachian Mountains, let's check. Nice. And by the way, these are relevant to our discussions about colonization and exploration of North America. Western Mountain Range. This one was a tricky one, much later. Okay, Steve Jobs? Rocky Mountains. Rocky Mountains. Okay, what ocean is this? It was the ocean they um, sailed over, through, for the Columbian Exchange. What do you got there? I'm just going to call on someone at random here. Sally Ride. What's, what ocean is right here between Europe and the New World? Atlantic. Atlantic. Let's check it out. See? And this last one. Okay. Um, Lewis and Clark got there in the early 1800s. Bill Gates. Pacific. Specific Pacific. Let's see. Nice. All right. I would like everyone to take out their notebook. Please take out your notebook and turn to Tuesday's notes. You should have them labeled as February 23rd. My son's birthday was that day, and no, it's my dad's birthday today. Yeah. The early bird special at Red Lobster. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, you took, by the way, things that you see on this sticky note are the same exact notes that you wrote down on Tuesday, I hope. Here's what I'm doing. This is just called as part of the agenda. This is just called our um, review. No, not a review. We're checking our notes. Because I felt really rushed, and I don't know if you did on Tuesday. So everyone, how many of you have found this note on February 23rd? My class. Good. There's evidence that it's there. Conflict and cooperation between the Native Americans, Europeans, and Africans influenced life in America. Okay. So here comes the next one you should have written down on Tuesday. Can you find it? Does it match? Because I copied it word for word from the slides that you saw on Tuesday. Okay. Or am I wrong, by the way? Is this one in your notes? Okay, speak now or... or... <laughs> All right, here we go. Can someone predict what the next one's going to tell me? If we're going note after note in sequential order? Yes, Henry Ford. Okay, one more time. Many wars, boom. So everyone, this should be point three in Tuesday's notes. Many wars were fought between the colonists and the Native Americans. Okay. For the people not looking up at all, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. Okay. You are in control of your own success right now. Next one. Okay, check that note to make sure it matches what you've written in your notes. I did promise you on Tuesday that you'd be able to see these again. So this is an easier version. This was the catalyst to the French and Indian War. Okay, this was kind of the tipping point. And... This was note number five from Tuesday. Does it look familiar? So I'm going to call on one person here. Let's see here. Let's go with... Um, 
Um, Amelia Earhart. Does this look familiar? Does it match? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Here's note number six. This was the one I struggled with. When I was putting this together yesterday, I'll be honest with you, I lost my notes on what I was sharing with you. I kept track. Is this a new one or an old one? Who says new? Who says old? Good, make sure it matches. Everyone else, please do the same thing. And the next one. Okay, please find packet page 25. Packet page 25, or 20, no, 25, 25, 25. I'm giving you time to help yourselves. That's what this comes down to, okay? You don't have to have everything memorized, but being resourceful is a huge skill. All right, so page 25 is gonna look like this. This will be the, I'll be honest with you, this will be the last time you have a chance to just double check, triple check, to make sure the answers match. Okay, I see a lot of you paying attention without your heads down, thanks. All right, make sure spelling and capitalization are on there too. Of course, if you didn't get this done, well, here's your final chance, but I'm not gonna wait for you. Okay, how many of you need more time on this one? All right, here's page 28. Yes, I love it. I hear pages being turned. Which is the which was the largest colony by population? Okay, which British colony had the largest population? Okay, Neil Armstrong. Virginia, that's number five. Okay. Who once controlled um, Louisiana? Who once controlled Louisiana? Okay. Uh, Susan B. Anthony? Okay. Correct. France, the French. So, which was the. You think about. I want you to think about the eastern part of the country at the time. Which country had the smallest territory? Which country controlled the smallest amount of territory or land? Okay, you got three choices. They should be in your brain now. Steve Jobs? Spain. Spain is correct. Now, South America, that's a different story. Mexico, that's a different story. Okay, so anyone need more time on this one? All right, so if you are done with that, you may start putting those things away. Chromebooks are still closed. Okay, Chromebooks are still closed. You're going to see something uh, about 3 o'clock. I think it's 3 o'clock. About 3.05. At 3.05, you're going to see this right here. Okay? It'll look like this. I haven't posted it yet. You're going to have to take, you're going to be watching, your teachers are going to be showing you two videos. Then there's going to be an exit ticket for those two videos. Okay? Um, it's right here. Exit ticket, two videos, there's only five questions. But you're probably wondering, Mr. Glinsky, we already watched these videos. Well, sort of. Okay, because here's what I saw from other classrooms when security was on, when you should have been watching these videos on Tuesday. I saw people not watching these videos. I saw people playing games. I saw people doing other things other than watching these. That doesn't truly represent all of you, but I know some of you had technical issues on Friday, on Tuesday. You couldn't get to these videos. Uh, some of you, unfortunately, didn't make the choice of watching these two videos. All right, so the teachers are going to uh, go down here, show you two videos. Please do them in order, number one and then number two. And when they are done, everyone, that's when this will be open and you can finish the exit ticket for that. Okay. Anyone have any questions? 
I'm going to check the other classrooms. Classrooms. Um, oh, thank you, Mrs. Potter. Um, do you remember that one last year, Mrs. Beshevin? I think we started at Fever 1793. Yeah, Mrs. Potter, thank you. That was the one um, we did last year. We actually did that one um, during COVID. Yeah, when everything shut down. Anyway, I digress. So, my class, any questions? I am going to close out and we are going 